China Sinovac Biotech created the first COVID-19 vaccine approved for general use in China called Coronavac. It has been in use since December 2020 and is also being distributed to a number of countries including Indonesia, Brazil and Turkey. How safe is it? What about the side effects and how is that being monitored? And why are there questions over its efficacy? Joining me today is Helen Yang, Senior Director of International Business development at uh, Sinovac Biotech. Ms. Yang, thank you very much for joining us. Now, the Sinovac vaccine was approved for general use almost two months ago, and so far, no severe reactions uh, have been reported. Uh, help us understand what specifically are the results of the general use so far. How safe is it? Right. Actually, uh, Sinovac's Coronavac was developed based on an inactivated vaccine roadmap an inactivation technology is uh, very reliable and it's a proven technology used for years and used amount of huge amount of people in the past. And one of the advantage of inactivated vaccine is that it, it has a super safety uh, uh, profile. And also we learned that from our trials and studies um, while we're developing Coronavac. Like in phase one, phase two, we conducted in China as well as the global phase three trial in the countries that you mentioned actually the uh, reported side effect comparing to the vaccine group um, versus the uh, placebo group, there are no si significant differences. And most of the reported uh, side effect is uh, pain at injection sites mm -hmm. and low fever, which is uh, uh, not, uh, none of them are over uh, 38 degrees Celsius, which is uh, a very good result. What about any official efficacy number that you can give? Right. Actually, um, you know, we conduct the uh, phase three trial, the efficacy studies outside of China, including Brazil, Turkey and Indonesia. And currently our trials in Chile is still ongoing. Mm -hmm. And recently in Turkey, um, it has reported an interim analysis report, uh, which shows the vaccine is uh, effective with 91.25 uh, percent. And then um, our Brazil report also announced um, eight results. It has a different um, level of a description for the vaccine efficacy rate. The vaccine can protect 100% over the severe cases and hospitalized cases, and uh, almost 78% to prevent the, uh, uh, the mild cases with medical assistance. And overall, if we include all the very mild symptoms, even without any medical um, assistance, the overall efficacy rate is uh, 50 0.4 percent, mm -hmm. which is still above the standard required by WHO. So in conclusion, we think the vaccine is safe and effective. Mm -hmm. Well, exactly on that uh, last uh, set of numbers, there have been some questions. Um, we understand that on January the 17th, the Brazilian Health Regulatory Agency announced that the first stage uh, clinical trials in Brazil conducted by its uh, Butantan Institute show an efficacy of 50.39 uh, percent. That's uh, uh, quite a difference from the 78% announced earlier by the just a week earlier by the Sao Paulo state government. So some people are saying uh, why the discrepancy, you know, what, what what does it mean that you have 78 in one week and then the next week is 50%? How does it compare with other vaccines which uh, seem to have shown a much higher efficacy number over 90, for instance, uh, that's uh, found among a foreign produced vaccines? So help us understand a little bit better the difference in the data and uh, to solve the confusion. Sure. Um, as I mentioned, actually for the Brazilian trial, this is the only trial being conducted in the world among healthcare workers only. And you know, for this group of people, those are very high risk group. They exposed to the virus while they are working in hospitals. Um, so our trial is, was conducted in a very challenging um, environment. So the different number shows that 100% protection is to against the severe cases and hospitalized cases and 78% protection is to against those uh, mild cases, but they need to require the medical assistance. Actually, the purpose of uh, conducting the trial is to study whether we can develop a vaccine to be used to protect people, to lower down the burden on the social healthcare system. E when we are having people are dying every day and we short of beds in hospital, those are the key objectives we want to develop a vaccine. But a 50% is the number that if we include all the cases, all the twen uh, 250 cases included, and 85 of them are actually very mild uh, cases without any requirement for the medical system, because some of the symptoms they claim are not COVID specific. 
So some of them may just a virus carrier, and their symptoms might not be the infection because of the virus. Just because they are working in that environment, it's easy for them to contact with the virus. So we think even with this uh, challenging environment, our vaccine still shows to be effective, about 50%, which we think is amazing results. Is there a way to compare, is it fair to compare the 50% against the 90 or over 90% found in other vaccines? Are the standards the same? No, not really. Actually, um, even to compare our results in Brazil to the uh, results conducted from uh, Turkey, that's uh, purely independent studies. And uh, e even we compare to the other vaccine trials, those are not apple to apple comparison because no matter from the protocol, the targeted uh, volunteers, the designs, the uh, justification for the cases, those are all specific to the specific trial. What do people uh, take away from the number 50%, 50.39%? It is still higher than the regulatory threshold, which means it's still good to use. And yet, uh, when, when people say it's 50.39%, does it mean that if they get the vaccine, um, they only get about half the chance of being protected from infection? Uh, well, actually, for Brazilian regulator, they already announced and published all the uh, formulas how to make the calculation about that number. But mm -hmm. I would encourage people to focus more on the numbers that we can use to prevent the uh, severe cases and hospitalized cases. And those, the, uh, that's the social burden. And we're trying to use the vaccine to help the society to go back to normal. And that the calculation for the 50 is only for the, our trial in Brazil, which is conducted in the healthcare workers only. But while we're using the vaccine, those will be in the general population. And based on the analysis and discussion with our partners, we think it is very likely if the vaccine applies to the general population, the number would be higher. But this is a scientific uh, formula. And I think the regulator um, in Brazil, they publicly do their um, evaluation and those reports are publicly available and we encourage people to go mm -hmm. and, and read it. Now, Turkey authorized the emergency, emergency use of uh, your Coronavac on January the 13th with Turkish President Erdogan taking a shot in public. However, there has been reportedly uh, public concern due to the, uh, first of all, the numbers that we were, t the inconsist the so-called inconsistency of numbers, and secondly, uh, of the issue of uh, transparency since the vaccine's early trial, say, uh, saying that your company has not released your own data for public scrutiny. Are these legitimate questions especially about transparency? Um, I think actually for us, we are the manufacturer of vaccines. And actually we provide the same vaccine from the same batch to all these phase three trial sites. And the trials were conducted independently by the local sponsor. In Brazil is Butantan and in uh, Turkey is our local partner in Indonesia is uh, Biofarma. So they're conducting the trial independently. And for us, we collect, we're going to collect all this data from different countries and we're going to analyze it. And also we need to uh, formulate and to put together all the data based on the Chinese regulation, Chinese FDA's re requirements in order to, to apply for the Chinese license. So we think for us, we are just in the middle of uh, finalizing our phase three trial, even though there are already been some uh, results announced by our partner in those different countries. So when can we expect the uh, final results, the initial data, uh, let's say, to be released um, for comprehensive uh, analysis of the efficacy of your uh, vaccine? Right. Um, I think uh, we, are of course, trying to do it as, as soon as we can. And we also need to engage a discussion with our regulators in China um, after we see all the data, you know, in, even in Turkey, the trials only an, provided an interim analysis and their trial is still ongoing. Mm -hmm. We need to wait until they complete it and to collect all the data. And we're still collecting data from our Brazilian partner as well. well what about the, the logic that while you are still waiting for the final data, it is safe to, to be put into emergency use? Right. Actually, for emergency use, um, I think from different government, they balance the risk and benefit. And we have already provided a large amount of the safety data uh, to the regulator in different countries. And also that was um, some of them are arise from their local trials. So we believe that the regulator make the decision based on balancing the risk and, mm -hmm. and benefit of using this vaccine. Yeah. Well, Brazilian doctor interviewed said that his confidence in CoronaVac was due to the open and transparent clinical trials held in his country. But uh, um, so uh, 
Are there any such trials being held in China using your vaccine, especially uh, phase three trials? Um, well, the other trials in China, I think if we are talking about coronavirus, you know, in China, the, uh, we don't have, um, uh, actually we feel very safe um, living here in China because there are not much reported cases. But in order to do the efficacy study, we do need to have an environment with certain incident rates to test whether the vaccine can provide protection. So uh, we only conduct phase one and phase two studies in China, and the uh, result has already been publicly uh, reported and published on the Lancet previously. Hmm. Um, in terms of uh, um, the, uh, the kind of uh, attitude in terms of uh, acceptance or confidence in Chinese-made vaccine, there is this uh, director of the Butanta Institute, uh, Dimas Kovas, who said the uh, suspicion of CoronaVac is due to its being Chinese-made. He said this trial shows out total transparency in the process. This vaccine was criticized for being developed in association with China as if this were a sin. So how do you make of his comment? And have Chinese vaccines faced in general some kind of a discrimination when being promoted around the world? What is your company's experience? Um, I think it would, um, I will not be uh, judging for the comments from others, but I think as a manufacturer of vaccine manu from China or from US or from UK, we only need to focus on whether we have a safe and effective vaccine, which could be deployed easily and can be provided good accessibility to the world to help people everywhere to going back to normal. It seems there is an interesting phenomenon. Uh, some call it catastrophic, of course. It's not nice because there is a great uh, um, imbalance or inequality in terms of the distribution of vaccines. In some uh, more developed countries, they have a greater number of vaccines, but in the other parts of the world, the number is much smaller. And it seems that uh, you know Chinese-produced vaccines seem to be more used in developing countries and not in uh, developed American or, or European countries. Is, there, is that a natural happening or is that a matter of uh, um, your being not accepted in certain part of the world? Uh, well, actually the focus of the territories is also part of our strategies and that is uh, started from why we are developing this vaccine. As I said, we're trying to provide a safe and effective vaccine to help people in the world. We believe that in U.S. and U.K., they have existing infrastructure industry who are capable of supplying vaccines. But largely amount of uh, developing countries or undeveloped countries, they are not able to get um, fast access to the vaccines. That's why I think as a manufacturer in developing countries, we should take this responsibility to provide the good vaccines to them. That's why we start from, the, uh, from different continents in the developing countries, we believe. That is the, um, uh, the first action we need to do. It doesn't prevent us to go to U.S. or U.K. in the future, but I think for the current situation under the pandemic, we need to get a equal access by different countries of having a good vaccine. Finally, out of curiosity, what is the annual capacity of Sinovac right now, and uh, how big is it going to be by the end of, let's say, 2021? Sure. Actually, we begin build up our capacity only with 300 million doses. At the beginning, we thought we provide this for China to protect Wuhan. But lately, after this uh, pandemic become global, we um, even before we complete the research, we already invest to double our capacity to 600 million doses per year. And we will be ready for that in the first quarter this year. And then we're also keep to expanding to 1 billion doses in around middle of this year. So if the, uh, there is an additional need, uh, we, we think we'll be ready to keep expanding it. And I think one of the advantage for our inactivated vaccine is not only safety, but also the, um, uh, the transportation. Uh, we only require our vaccine be stored and transported at a two to eight degrees Celsius. So which is a large amount of vaccine, massive uh, delivery and um, uh, access of the vaccine. And this is also a part of uh, our advantage when developing this large quantity to undeveloped or even developing countries. Many thanks to Helen Yang, Senior Director of International Business Development at Sinovac Biotech. With that, we come to the end of this edition of The Point with me, Lu Xin. As always, follow me on Facebook and Twitter using the handle Lu Xin in Beijing. Go to YouTube and look for CGTN The Point. Thanks for watching. We've got The Point.